All right, we got a 4R100 uh, valve body and auxiliary valve body on the bench. We're gonna take these apart, clean them up, and then when we go back with them, we're gonna be installing the Transgo tugger kit so you can see uh, how the valve trains are oriented and what the lineups look like both before and after uh, the shift kit's installed. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with the manual valve. So manual valve's just held in place by a retainer clip. So all you gotta do is just pry up on the casting, take it loose, and then just take out the manual valve. Then flip the valve body over. Next valve is gonna be the low reverse modulator valve train. So you got an inboard and outboard valve, then you got a plunger, a sleeve, and a spring. So this is under a little bit of spring tension. So when you're prying out with it, you kind of want to keep your thumb here to make sure it doesn't fly across the room on you. So here you have the little valve inside the plunger. Sorry about that, compressor went off. Um, so then is your spring followed by the inboard and outboard low reverse modulator valves. So you kind of go back and forth as you get access to the, uh, you know, the prying points on each valve. And sometimes it can be a little fussy to get out, take a little bit of uh, manipulation. But they'll, they'll come out eventually. So this is the uh, low reverse modulator valve. All right, so then we're going to move to the three four shift valve. So same retainer clip. And then once the clip's out of the way, what you're gonna do is thread a valve body bolt into the little plug so that you can remove it with a slide hammer. So a lot of these end plugs, or you know, a lot of these uh, valve trains are capped with end plugs that have threaded ports for valve body bolts so that you can take them out. So same kind of deal, a little bit spring tension, so you want to be careful. I mean, the plug falling on the ground is not going to hurt anything, but you want to make sure that the valve just doesn't go flying, spring doesn't go flying, and you lose track of stuff. All right, let's do our two, three shift valve. So again, you just wanna be careful. All right, so that is the uh, manual valve side of the valve body. So four valve trains on each side. Just 
going to free up a little bit more space here on this towel so that I could put the other four over here. All right, so we have the um, solenoid regulator valve, the coast clutch shift valve. This is the 432 timing valve. And then you have your 1-2 shift valve. And you feel the valves dragging a little bit as they're coming out or they're not coming out real easy. You just want to kind of make a note of where, you know, where those uh, valves are so that once the casting's all cleaned up, you can go back in there and you can polish the bores so that uh, the valves go back in nice and smooth, you know, without this kind of resistance. Like this one... This one's was is fairly stuck in there. So if they go back in like this, then more than likely you're gonna have all kind of shifting problems. <clears throat> So you obviously don't want that. All right, here's our coast clutch shift valve. Let's see how this one comes out. All right, this one doesn't feel too bad so far. Yeah, that feels okay. Next, you have your 432 timing valve. So there's two valves in here and three springs. So you have a, a piston in here and then you have a retainer keeping the rest of the valve train in. And sometimes the piston likes to get caught up right at the entrance. And this one's being really stubborn. They're usually not this bad. They usually just come come out with a little bit of a little bit of pulling force, but this one is in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the retainer and then use the rest of the valve train to drive it out. Because normally what you would do is just simply go in with your pick and then lift up on the retainer because it's got a groove or a slot just like this one and it would be real easy to take out at that point.
Okay. All right, so let's see if I can now use the rest of this valve train to force out that stubborn little piston in there. have enough of that piston exposed or when I do I'm gonna grab it with the pliers if I can unless it's already coming out So here what I'm doing is I'm actually using the spring itself to try to move everything forward. But this is a pretty weak spring based on what I'm trying to do. I'm gonna try something. So I've done this before with other valve bodies and, you know, real stubborn ports like this. So I have a couple of bolt heads that I've cut off and then some small nuts and washers. And what I like to do is I'll fill up the, fill up the bore from the backside with some of this stuff and use them as kind of extensions to the valving so that I can have something to pry against and force everything out. So I'm gonna try that and see if that works at all. So I think that one got, got it to move a little bit. I'm gonna put one more in, see what happens. So the main hang up here is that spring. It's just, it's, it's a weak spring. Gen I mean, it's not weak. It's designed the way it's designed, but it's too weak to, to do what I'm trying to do with it.
Okay, looks like we'll get it. Looks like it's gonna come out. And it is definitely seized, so we're gonna have to polish this area right at the end there. the 432 timing valve itself valve itself come out I think we got one more uh, bolt hit in there there we go all right so I guess if you're ever in a position like that and you uh, can't get a valve out you have one more technique available to you uh, if that's not something you're already doing. All right, the one two shift valve is last. And then once this is out, the valve body will be completely empty. So here's your drive two valve. And then the one two shift valve follows it. All right, so that's the valve body. It's completely empty now. We can move on to the auxiliary valve body. So here uh, we're going to have the engagement control valve. That's this valve right here. And then we have our 1-2 manual transition valve here. Okay, that takes a smaller, <clears throat> excuse me, takes a smaller th thread, but uh, no matter, it, it can be pried out. All right, those are the only two valve trains in the auxiliary valve body. So we'll clean these up, get all the valves cleaned up, get the shift kit parts um, put in their respective locations, and then uh, we'll get started uh, putting it all back together. So um, the 432 timing valves piston and the solenoid regulator valve were a little bit difficult getting out, so we got to polish those bores and clean them up so that uh, when the valves go back in, they're moving nice and free.